Good afternoon, church. Fred Craddock often said, the question is not whether the church is dying. The question is whether the church is giving its life for the world. Then Jesus told his disciples, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. No one sews a piece of unshrunk cloth on an old cloak, for the patch pulls away from the cloak, and a worse tear is made. Neither is new wine put into old wineskins, otherwise the skins burst and the wine is spilled and the skins are destroyed, but new wine is put into fresh wineskins and so both are preserved. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him might have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. For God so loved the world. God is on a mission of love to save the world. When God calls us into God's mission, I want disciples to be present and accounted for. Don't you? I want the world to be a better place because we were here. More like the reign of God because we have walked in the way of Jesus. Disciples, are we giving our lives for the world? Are we part of God's mission of love? Now true, it's not always easy to know exactly where to jump in. The, the landscape for mission in this 21st century is changing around us. Sometimes we don't know what we can take with us. We don't know what we're going to have to leave behind. We can't quite figure out yet what we're creating new to meet new challenges. Well, it's the invent new part that I want to address just a little bit today. For us to really make a difference in this new landscape for mission, we need some new wineskins. We need to lay down some of the life of our church-wide structure as we know it. We need to give our life for the world and find new life. Listen to the story of Shawnee Community Christian Church as told by Pastor Johnny Lewis. Shawnee Park was founded in 1978 in a house on donated farmland. It grew quickly, brimming with youth, built a new sanctuary and education space, dreamed of an exciting future. Then during the economic downturn of the early 2000s, it struggled. In 2011, we participated in New Beginnings with Hope Partnership. What we learned about ourselves was not good news. We were giving 3% of donated funds to mission while nearly 60% went toward a large mortgage we struggled to pay and a building that was aging faster than we could keep up with. We agreed reluctantly and unanimously to sell our property, relocate to rented space, invest more of ourselves in real mission, and start over as a new church, doing ministry in new ways that might continue our witness in the neighborhood. This journey has had some bumps. There have been sisters and brothers who affirmed this choice, but lovingly shared that they were not up for starting over. Still, God is good. In 2015, we are a tithing church for the first time in years. We will provide 500 boxes of food for area families this year, and we recently collected $8,000 in one month for the Global Mission Initiative for Clean Water in Congo. Ironically, this is the same monthly mortgage payment we could never meet. Yesterday, we celebrated baby dedications, baptisms, and new members. We are alive. We are alive because God is faithful, because people in our region continue to believe in us, because of hope partnership. We are alive because of faithful people who lay down their personal preferences and comforts in hope of resurrection. Jesus said, those who lose their life for my sake will find it. 
Are we disciples giving our lives for the world? Are we willing to pour the wine of the Spirit into some new wineskins? Listen to the story of the Northwest region and their new wineskins, helping them to focus on God's mission. In 2009, the Northwest region adopted a new governance structure. Previously, we had operated with a single regional board responsible for finances, property, personnel, program, oversight, and planning all in one. The meetings were long and left us with little energy for creative dreaming and imagining. With a new vision and mission plan in place, we looked for a structure that would gather wisdom from across the region, create a space for innovation, and seek to ask, what is God doing next, rather than what have we always done? We wanted form to follow function. We opted for a trifold structure that includes a regional board, a mission council, and region-wide gatherings we call common tables. Our regional board operates under the phrase, mission is our, or business is our mission, and oversees the finances, personnel, and legal work of the region. Our mission council, which uses the phrase, mission is our business, coordinates the planning and visioning for regional ministry. The two groups come together along with our ministry teams and interested people from across the Northwest for occasional common table events. At the common table, we celebrate the ministries that we are doing in the region and in our congregations. We worship together as the body of Christ and we listen together for where God is leading us next. We know that communication between the Mission Council and the board is essential because the work that each does is impacted by the other and because God is always calling us to do new things. We are continuing to evaluate and tweak the structure as we go along. We know it will continue to evolve. But for now, we, we believe our structure is helping us to live out our vision to be a community of communities doing together what we cannot do apart. Thanks, Sandy. Regions and congregations are finding new wineskins for the 21st century, new ways of organizing their common life to help them put God's mission first in their ministries. Now it's time for disciples as a whole church to put God's mission first through some new wineskins. You know, we disciples have a mission statement, a good one. Our mission is to be and to share the good news of Jesus Christ, witnessing, loving, and serving from our doorsteps to the ends of the earth. Our identity statement has taken off. We are disciples of Christ, a movement for wholeness in a fragmented world. As part of the one body of Christ, we welcome all to the Lord's table as God has welcomed us. You can learn more about wholeness for disciples by going to disciples.org and using materials there. I'm so grateful for the Council on Christian Unity and Communication Ministries for helping to populate that website. You can also learn more about wholeness by using my book, which I think is available around here somewhere. <laughs> We've named our mission, We've claimed wholeness at the core of our identity and welcome at the table as our spiritual center. And now, well now we need to get up from the table, go outside the doors and actively engage in God's mission at God's call. We need to be giving our lives away. Many of us in Sunday school learned this little rhyme. Let's see how many of you can do it with me. Here's the church, here's the steeple, open the doors and see all the people. 
Oh, yay, you did learn it. <laughs> Retired regional minister Ben Boren has rewritten that rhyme for our time. Let me show it to you. Here's the church with prayer and vision. Throw open the doors, go out into mission. Want to try that one? Yeah. Huh? <laughs> try that one with me. Here's the church with prayer and vision. Throw open the doors, go out into mission. Thank you, Ben. Todd Adams, my associate, does workshops about governance and mission. He says that God's call is simple and clear. Jesus called us into mission through the Great Commission and the Great Commandment. These, however, are not mutually exclusive principles. We cannot just be a Great Commandment church that is all about love, but not about making disciples. And we cannot just be a Great Commission church that is all about making disciples, yet having people who don't demonstrate the love of God and who don't know how to get their hands dirty for Jesus. Our call is to love God and to love neighbor and to make disciples. Our call is to die, to give away our very life for others. Or maybe more immediately when you get home, <laughs> your pew where you've sat for the last 40 years. Time to take your name off the bottom of it. Amen. Or your Sunday school class that might have a better purpose for it. Or any of these other things that have become our prized possessions. Amen. Disciples, in order to fulfill God's call for the 21st century, we know we have to change. We have to find some new wine skins to help us answer God's call. This is where Mission First comes in. Mission First is both a call to the church to be in mission, and it's a pilot process for how to organize for our journey. Mission First is about disciples making a difference, about us leaving the world in better shape than when we found it. It's about making new wineskins to deliver God's wine of wholeness and hope in a still somewhat new century. Mission First is about disciples giving our life for the world by putting God's mission first. You know, disciples, when we put our minds to it and our hearts to it, we do make a difference. Over the last few years, I've told you in this very assembly, this very assembly setting, I've told you about um, our reaction in the wake of Hurricanes Katrina and Rita, reaching out to neighbors regardless of faith or non-faith. Reaching out is what we do into a neighborhood as large as the world. A couple of assemblies ago, I introduced to you baby Hanuk the son of a disciples pastor in Congo. Indiana Regional Minister Rick Spleth dedicated Enoch as an infant in a church on stilts in the Congo River and there in the presence of some disciples from the United States and Canada. We made the normal baby dedication promises to that child and to that family. We said we would live the kind of lives that would witness to that child in such a way that when he grows up, he would know and love Jesus and want to follow in his footsteps. Baby Enoch is now seven years old. I know, right? <laughs> He's our child as are all the children of the world, but this one we know by name. Enoch likes to go to church with his dad and to play with his friends. He's God's child, part of the human family, part of our family. 
I've told you about a small conservative Indiana congregation who reaches out to migrant workers in the name of Christ, and about the Reverend Dr. William Barber II, a North Carolina disciples pastor who leads his community and now a nation in Moral Monday campaigns in the name of Christ. In the name of Christ. He's doing what we do, reaching out to our neighbors by addressing racism from the schoolhouse to the state house. At a recent General Assembly, you met Filiberto Pereira, who runs a refugee center on the Texas-Mexico border. Now at this assembly, I want you to meet the VIEW Christian Church in Portland, Oregon. There's Portland, is, is Oregon in the house? I want you to meet The View. Their small membership is involved in Big Mission, possible in part because they meet in homes and they collect offerings to be given away. In the words of John Wesley, they say, we do as much as we can, as often as we can, for as many as we can. Meet Kenny Hardaway and First Christian Church, Wheeling, West Virginia, who are seeking to eradicate loneliness by reaching out to seniors in their neighborhood, in retirement communities next to their church. I want you to meet Torino Rivera, who started a church, he started a church in a car mechanic's garage. And there in the well, which is what, is under what you would work on a car in, turn that into the baptistry. <laughs> a neighborhood often marked by hopelessness saw a church family grow. Fe Esperanza y Amor, Faith, Hope, and Love Christian Church has now outgrown the garage and they're meeting in a local church. Praise God. I want you to know about the Chuckies community of disciples in Arkansas, and the Zo from Myanmar, and the Montagnards from Vietnam, and 18 other language groups from Pacific and Asian countries who make up the burgeoning community of NAPAD, North American Pacific Asian Disciples. I want you to meet Samer Laham, our global ministries partner in Syria, who leads our work with refugees there. Samer has moved his family to the safety of Beirut, right? You heard that, to the safety of Beirut. But Samer continues his work with refugees, traveling the Damascus Road each week, where just showing up is an act of phenomenal courage. But our partner goes back and forth again and again, showing us what it means to give our lives for others, to put God's mission of love first. We disciples and our partners are part of God's mission of love for the world. Our neighbors matter to us. Displaced families in Syria, yes. Disaster relief on the Gulf Coast or in Nepal, yes and yes. Food pantries and gardens, well, food pantries everywhere. Yes, yes, yes. Disciples do make a difference. And yet. We could do so much more. We're still that best kept secret. We worry too much about decline. Are we dying? Um, what about General Assembly? Instead of giving our life for the world, we could do so much more if we would put all the worry aside and rigorously, strategically, prayerfully together put mission first. God's mission first. Well, Mission First is also a pilot project. It's a pilot process for 2016 authorized by the General Board to help us disciples find our shared mission. Here's how the Mission First pilot will work. Through four, four eyes, input, identity, implement, and impact. 
Input comes through mission gatherings. Every disciple who wants to be involved in mission first can participate in a mission gathering. At mission gatherings, you will share your wisdom. You will connect with other disciples. You will listen for God's call and help name that call for the disciples of Christ today. In mission gatherings, you will be inspired by what you hear about God already doing in your own disciples' community. You will make connections with people around you. You will intensify your own desire to have an impact in sharing God's love for the world. Mission gatherings will be in regions and racial ethnic communities and in youth camps and conferences and in meetings of disciples, women, and other places where you want them to be. This very afternoon, you'll have a chance to sign up for a mission gathering near you. We look forward to seeing how many of you will want to be involved. The mission gatherings are the place then where we will have input. The second I is identify, and here's where we start to get into some new wineskins. Identify is the role of the mission council. It is a new representative body that will identify trends in God's call to mission for disciples today. It will compile and pray over it to help us focus on our engagement in God's mission. The mission council will help us as a church truly put mission first. The mission council will ask, where is God calling us this movement for wholeness with a mission to be and to share the good news of Jesus Christ? We know that we disciples are going to continue to start new congregations. We're going to continue to work to nurture existing congregations and their transformational journey. We know that we're going to continue to form leaders for this work, and we know for sure that we will continue our commitment to the journey of becoming a pro-reconciling, anti-racist church. But even in all of that, even in all of that, what is our focus for this season? We know that we will continue with global ministries and health and social services and with our core calling to Christian unity. But through all the specific callings to our varied ministries, what is the shared mission focus God has for disciples of Christ today? Working through the mission gatherings and the mission council, we will identify that focus. The next I is implement. Mission First is ministries working together. Mission First brings an expectation that as we engage more fully in God's mission in all expressions, the ministries, general, regional, congregational, higher education, and others, will plan together what we hope to accomplish and how we're going to accomplish it. Mission First is implementation through collaboration. Our ministries already partner so well together it really is part of who we are. It's part of what it means to be in covenant. We do partner well together. And yet, so little in our system itself expects such collaboration. Serious collaborative work today is based primarily on the goodwill of particular leaders. Mission First provides a framework for disciples in all expressions, congregational, regional, general, to work together on strategies to implement mission outcomes. Implementation also involves a second new body, tentatively called the Governance Board. This part of the new structural wineskin will be responsible for the governance-like responsibilities that are currently distributed across the administrative committee and the general board. Once ministries have outlined their strategies for implementation, the governance board will hold them accountable in covenant. This is what you said you'd do. How's it going? It will be a covenantal accountability based on mutual agreements. And finally, Mission First is all about the fourth I, impact. Impact, Mission First, is about disciples making a difference in Jesus' name, having an impact in God's mission 
of love actually being a movement for wholeness. Being and sharing the good news of Jesus Christ from our doorstep to the ends of the earth. Giving ourselves for others. Disciples Women give us an example of this laser focus with their emphasis on human trafficking. The clear, focused call to action has energized their ministry and purpose. Our partners, the United Church of Christ, in 2011 set hunger relief as mission one and so many people were fed. Nearly 38,000 letters were written, a million and a half food items were donated, and hundreds of thousands of dollars donated to hunger relief in the United States and East Africa. A coordinated strategy, outcomes you could see. What are disciples known for? Mission First will help us answer that question. Through your input in mission gatherings, by identifying trends in mission for disciples today, by collaborating and implementing a mission strategy through a mission council, and by being accountable for it through a governance board, disciples will have an impact. Together we will make a difference in God's mission of love. It starts with each one of us looking at ourselves and embracing the challenge. As a follower of Christ, I will make a difference. I will make the time to participate in a mission gathering. I will collaborate in the action that follows. I will love in new ways. I am expecting the unexpected. When you add up all the eyes, all those eyes together become we, a movement for wholeness in the name of Christ, a movement focused on being part of God's mission of love, giving our lives for the world, and in so doing, finding life. Remember Pentecost, when the disciples were locked up inside that little room, so fearful? They were praying, but they were not yet church. Not until the Spirit moved in them and sent them out into the streets, witnessing in the languages of those out there, not until then did they become church. With prayer and with vision, go forth into mission. As we already heard today from Pastor Dietra, Come on out into the streets. I promise you'll meet Jesus there. Disciples, are we ready to go out into mission? Are we ready to give our life for the world? Are we ready to put God's mission first? Well, we can start right now. <laughs> How many of you will join me in praying that disciples will get up from the table, go out the doors and put God's mission first. How many will join you in, me in praying for that? Amen, amen, amen. How many of you will participate in a mission gathering for inspiration and input to know what God is doing among us? Amen. Amen. <laughs> I'll tell you what, you can let me know right now. How many have your devices on you? Let's see those phones. Right now you can uh, see in just a moment right here, you can go to this website and you can sign up for a mission gathering right now, now or sometime later in this assembly. And for those of you for whom paper works better, there's going to be ushers at the doorway to take your name and email address if you are interested in knowing more about your input and inspiration through a mission gathering. I hope a lot of you are going to sign up. I'll keep you posted on progress of how many are as we move through this assembly together. <laughs> I 
love this church. <laughs> Not because we're the greatest little church ever. <laughs> this just happens to be my community, our part of something that is so much bigger one expression of the larger body of Christ, which surely is intended ultimately to be the whole family of God, the whole human family made united and well and healed and whole. In that spirit, that part of God's whole human family, this little clan of the Christian church disciples of Christ, whose birth certificate was a, a death certificate, a, a will and testimony to die into the body at large. This little awkward body whose main goal and purpose is to stand for the unity that would mean that we wouldn't even exist anymore. I love this church. I know you do too. My goodness, on a summer Monday afternoon, you would not be here if you didn't love this church and the way we try to witness to the reality of our God. Amen. A church that gives its life for others will find life. Let's put God's mission first. Let's see where God leads us. May it be so.